Introduction Globalization is not a single concept or ideology which can be described or explained in a measured time span, nor can it be defined with a proper beginning or ending. Moreover, it cannot be implicated in any one or any situation. It is a notion without any boundaries which comprises of economic integration, the exchange or transfer of policies across the border, the transmission of awareness and knowledge, cultural constancy, the regeneration, relations and discourses of power. Globalization is a global process, concept or an establishment of a global market free from socio-political control. Globalization covers all these areas and has been defined, not recently, but from many past years, with reference to few connotations involving progress, development and stability, integration and cooperation, while other in relation to regression, colonialism and destabilization. Despite all these challenges, this single term brings with it a whole lot of hidden agendas. One's political philosophy, geographic locality, social status, cultural backdrop and racial as well as religious affiliation provide the background that determines how globalization is understood. Concurrently, Swedish journalist Thomas Larsen, in his book The Race of the Top, The Real Story of Globalization, 2001, stated that globalization is the process of world shrinkage of distances getting shorter, things moving closer. It pertains to the increasing ease with which somebody on one side of the world can interact to mutual benefit with somebody on the other side of the world. These two different interpretations imitate dissimilar perspectives ingrained in different world positions. By its nature, globalization spans a massive amount of restraints, communities and cultures. This, of course, permits for a range of perspectives, be they financial, social or political. Globalization is a term used to refer to the spreading out of economies past national borders, in particular the growth of construction by a firm to many countries all around the world, i.e. globalization of manufacturing or the global assembly line. This has given multinational corporations authority beyond nation-states and has undermined any nation's capability to be in charge of commercial practices as well as flows of capital, set policies, control poise of trade and exchange rates or supervise domestic economic strategy. It has also diluted the ability of employees to fight for better salary and working environment from fear that employers may be transferred to some other areas. It can be defined as a chronological stage of accelerated growth of market capitalism, like the one knowledgeable in the 19th century with the industrial insurrection. It is a fundamental revolution in societies because of the up-to-date technological mutiny which has led to a recombining of the financial and communal forces on a new territorial dimension. People around the world are more linked to each other than were ever before. The flow of information and money from one place to another is at a much faster pace than was ever experienced or seen. Goods and services manufactured in one part of the world are increasingly accessible in all parts of the world. Where international travel has become more frequent, on the same place international communication is commonplace. All this isn't happening by itself, but there surely is a force which is limitlessly funding it and driving it forward. There are various key players which are driving globalization. They include multinational endeavours that complete business crosswise over national limits, the World Trade Organization, WTO, through which global exchange conferences are arranged and authorised, the World Bank and the International Monetary Fund, IMF, which are intended to help governments in accomplishing improvement directs through the procurement of proceeds and particular help. National governments, who together with these universal organizations, are instrumental in deciding the results of globalization. This was just a brief introduction to the status of globalization today. Want to know more about it?
You have got to read out the entire book then. Introduction to Globalization Beginning with the basics makes understanding of complexities a lot easier. Keeping this in mind, this book has been designed in a way to start it from essentials which you need to know before you take another step. What is globalization? Globalization is a procedure of cooperation and integration among the general population, organizations and administrations of various countries, a procedure driven by universal exchange and speculation and supported by data innovation. This procedure has consequences for the earth, on society, on political frameworks, on monetary improvement and success, and on human physical prosperity in social orders far and wide. Globalization is not new, however. For a large number of years, individuals and later companies have been purchasing from and offering to one another and offering to one another in terrains at awesome separations, for example, through the really popular Silk Road crosswise over Central Asia that associated China and Europe in the course of the Middle Ages. In a similar manner, for a considerable length of time, individuals and partnerships have put resources into endeavours in different nations. Indeed, a number of the components of the present rush of globalization are like those predominant ones before the flare-up of the First World War in 1914. Yet approach and innovative advancements of a previous couple of decades have prodded increments in cross-fringe exchange, venture and movement so vast that numerous spectators believe that the world has entered a subjectively new stage in its financial improvement. Since 1950, for instance, the volume of world exchange has expanded by 20 times and from only 1997 to 1999 streams of outside speculation almost multiplied from $468 billion to $827 billion. Recognizing this present flood of globalization from prior ones, creator Thomas Friedman has said that today globalization is more remote, speedier, less expensive and very much profound. This present influx of globalization has been driven by strategies that have opened economies locally and universally. In the years since the Second World War, and particularly in the middle of the previous two decades, Numerous legislatures have received free showcase financial frameworks, immeasurably expanding their own profitable potential and making available a lot of new doors open for universal exchange and venture. Governments, likewise, have arranged sensational diminishments in hindrances to business and have set up universal assertions to advance exchange merchandise, administrators and venture exploiting new opportunities outside business sectors, enterprises have manufactured remote industrial facilities and built up creative and showcasing courses of action with remote accomplices. A characterizing highlight of globalization, accordingly, is a worldwide modern and money-related business structure. Innovation has been the other vital driver of globalization. Propels in data modernization, specifically, have significantly changed a financial life. Data advancements have given a wide range of individual economic on-screen characters, customers, speculators, organizations, profitable new apparatuses for distinguishing and seeking after financial openings, including quicker, and more educated investigations of financial patterns of the world over simple exchanges of advantages and a joint effort with far-flung accomplices. Globalization is profoundly dubious. Nonetheless, promoters of globalization contend that it permits poor nations and their nationals to grow financially and raise their ways of life while opponents of globalization claim that the making of liberated universal free market has profited multinational partnerships in the Western world to the detriment of nearby endeavors, neighborhood societies and normal individuals. Imperviousness to globalization along these lines 
come to completion both at a famous and at an administrative level as individuals and governments attempt to deal with the stream of capital, work, products and thoughts that constitute the present flood of globalization. History of Globalization Globalization has a long history. Old Greek society, for occurrence, spread crosswise over quite a bit of southwestern Asia, northern Africa, and southern Europe. The globalization of Greek society accompanied the victor Alexander the Great. Truth be told, there are urban areas named for Alexander in Iraq, Iskandaria, Egypt, Alexandria, and Turkey, Alexandria Troas. The Silk Road an exchange course in the middle of China and the Mediterranean Sea advanced the trading of thoughts and learning alongside exchange merchandise and sustenance. For example, silk, flavors, porcelain and different fortunes from the East. At the point when Europeans started setting up provinces abroad, globalization developed. Numerous early European pioneers were excited to convey the Christian religion to the districts they went by. The globalization of Christianity spread from Europe to Latin America through Christian teachers working with the neighborhood populaces. Globalization was accelerated in the 19th century with the Industrial Revolution as mechanical plants and production lines turned out to be more regular. Numerous organizations utilized crude materials from far-off terrains. They likewise saw their products in different nations. England's state in India, for the occasion, supplied cotton to British shippers and merchants. Madras, a light cotton fabric, was made in the city of Madras, now called Chennai, a noteworthy port in India. In the long run, Madras fabric was no more made in Madras by any stretch of the imagination. The Indian work power supplied the crude material, cotton. Manufacturing plants in the area of Lancashire, England, made Madras fabric. English manufacturing plants made fabric and different productions from the cotton. English makers could then offer their completed merchandise, for example dress and covers, to purchasers everywhere throughout the world, the United States, Brazil, Australia, even India. Globalization hastens drastically in the 20th century with the multiplication of air travel, the extension of unhindered commerce and the beginning of the information age. Miles of the fibre optic link now associate the land masses, permitting individuals around the globe to convey in a split second through the borderless World Wide Web. Types of Globalization There are three types of globalizations which are explained in this section one by one. First, Financial Globalization No national economy is an island now. To differing degrees, national economies impact each other. One nation which is capital rich puts resources into another nation which is poor. One who has better advances offers these to other people who need such innovations. The results of a propelled nation enter the business sectors of those nations that have requests for these items. So, also, the characteristic assets of creating nations are sold to created nations that need them. Along these lines, globalization is prevalently an economic procedure including the exchange of financial assets structure one nation to another. Second, social globalization. Society has progressively turned into merchandise. Mainstream books and movies have worldwide markets. Harry Potter has followers everywhere around the world. English motion pictures are seen nearly in all nations. Western popular music has ended up famous in creating nations. The converse stream of society is immaterial. The stream of societies for the most part from the north toward the south. In the most recent couple of years, the media owners of the West have indicated enthusiasm for entering creating nations. For instance, Murdoch has opened TV nations, Star News, Star Movies and Star Plus in India. Social globalization has been encouraged by the data upset, the spread of satellite correspondence, telecom systems, 
data innovation and the internet and so on. This worldwide stream of thoughts, information and qualities is liable to straighten out social contrasts between countries, districts and people. As this stream of society is principally from the middle to the outskirts, from the north toward the south, and from the towns and urban areas to towns, it is the way of life of towns of poor nations which will be the first to endure disintegration. Third, Political Globalization Since long, endeavours have been on to bring the entire world being run by the single government. The League of Nations and the UN have been the endeavours in that heading. It is trusted that the world under one government will be more secure and more liberated from clashes. The UN has given a false representation of desires, however, various provincial associations like the European Union, ASEAN, APEC and SARC, and Multicultural Economic Associations, for instance, WTO, have come up. When states stay sovereign through their commitments and responsibilities, they have, to some degree, coordinated themselves to the concerned universal associations and groupings. Pros and Cons of Globalization A narrative published in the Washington Post said, Twenty years prior globalization was pitched as a methodology that would bring all watercrafts up in poor and rich nations alike. In the US, furthermore, European customers would have their pick of cheap things made by individuals great many miles away, whose pay was much lower than theirs. Also, in time, exchange obstructions would drop to strengthen significantly more multinationals' extension and financial increases, while geopolitical collaboration would prosper. There is no doubt that globalization has been something worth being thankful for some creating nations who now have entry to business sectors and can trade modest products. Globalization has furthermore been of use for multinational companies and Wall Street. Yet, globalization has not been useful for working individuals, blue or cubicle, and has prompted the proceeding with deindustrialization of America. Globalization is entangled issue. It is important to assess the upsides and downsides before making any inferences. Pros Supporters of globalization contend that it can possibly improve this world, a spot to live in and fathom a percentage of the profoundly situated issues like unemployment and poverty. First, unhindered commerce should decrease hindrances, for example duties, esteem included charges, appropriations and different boundaries between countries. This is not genuine. There are still numerous hindrances to organised commerce. The Washington Post story says, The issue is that the enormous G20 nations included more than 1,200 prohibitive fare and import measures subsequent to 2008. Second, the defenders say globalisation speaks to unrestricted commerce, which advances worldwide financial development makes occupations, makes organisations more aggressive and brings down costs for customers. Third, the rivalry between nations should drive costs down. Much of the time this is not working since nations control their money to get a value advantage. Fourth, it additionally gives poor nations, through mixtures of remote capital and innovation, with the opportunity to grow financially. By flourishing, it makes the conditions in which majority rule system and admiration for human rights might prosper. This is an ethereal objective which hasn't been accomplished in many nations. Fifth, there is currently an overall business sector for organizations and buyers who have entry to results of various nations. Sixth, step by step, there is a force to be considered with that is being made rather than compartmentalised for segments. Legislative issues are combining and choices that are being taken are really helpful for individuals everywhere throughout the world. This is essentially a romanticised perspective of what is really happening. Seventh, 
There is more convergence of data between two nations which don't have anything in like manner between them. Eighth. There is social blending and every nation is adapting more about different societies. Ninth. Since budgetary scheming is shared, companies and governments are attempting to deal with natural issues for one another. True, they are talking more than attempting. Tenth. Socially, people have turned out to be more open and tolerant towards one another and individuals who live in the other part of the world and are not considered outsiders. Eleventh. A great many people see rapid travelling, mass interchanges and efficient spread of data through the internet as advantages of globalisation. Twelfth. Work can move from nation to nation to showcase their abilities. However, this can bring about issues with the current work and descend weight on wages. Thirteenth. Offering innovation to creating countries will offer them some assistance with progressing. Fourteenth. Transnational organisations putting resources into introducing plants in different nations give vocation to the general population in those nations, regularly getting them out of neediness. Fifteenth. Globalization has given nations the capacity to permit to facilitate commerce understandings like NAFTA, South Korea Chorus and the TPP. Though authentic, however, these understandings have taken a toll the US numerous occupations and dependently built our exchange shortage. Cons the general affirmation about globalization is that it has made the rich wealthier while making the non-rich poorer. It is brilliant for administrators, proprietors and financial specialists. However, hellfire on laborers and nature. Globalization should be about unhindered commerce where all obstructions are dispensed with the existence of still numerous boundaries. For instance, 161 nations have esteemed included charges on imports, which are as high as 21.6% in Europe. The US does not have any such charges. The most concerning issue for created nations is that occupations are lost and exchanged to lower-cost nations. Workers in created nations, like the US, face pay cut requests from businesses that debilitate to fair employments. This has made a society of foreboding for some white-collar class labourers who have little influence in this worldwide amusement. Large multinational enterprises can abuse and impose as asylums in different nations to abstain from paying charges. Multinational partnerships are blamed for social bad form, uncalled for working conditions, counting slave work wages, living and working conditions, and also the absence of sympathy towards the environment, mismanagement of normal assets and natural harm. Multinational partnerships, which were beforehand confined to business exercises, are progressively affecting political choices. Numerous think that there is a danger of companies controlling the world since they are picking up force because of globalisation. Building items abroad in nations such as China puts innovations in danger of being duplicated or stolen, which is actually happening quickly. The counter-globalists likewise guarantee that globalisation is not working for most of the world. Among the newest time of quick development in worldwide exchange and venture, 1960 to 1998, imbalance declined both globally and inside of nations. The UN Development Programme reports that the wealthiest 20% of the world's populace expend 86% of the world's assets, while the poorest 80% devour only 14%. Some specialists feel that globalization is additionally prompting the invasion of transmittable infections. Dangerous sickness like HIV, AIDS, are being spread by explorers to the remotest corners of the globe. Globalization has prompted abuse of work. Detainees and youngster laborers are utilized to work in harsh conditions. Well-being norms are overlooked to deliver shabby merchandise. 
there is likewise an expansion in human trafficking. Social welfare plans, or security nets, are under incredible weight in created nations on account of shortfalls, occupation misfortunes and other financial implications of globalization. Globalization is a monetary tidal wave that is clearing the planet. No one can stop it. However, there are numerous things which can be done to back it off and make it more impartial. What is missing? Authority. People require government officials as they are not willing to stand up to the con artists. One of the most serious issues is that seven of exchanging accomplices control their economic forms to increase unjustifiable cost advantage which expands their fares and declines their imports. This is unlawful under WTO authorities, so there is a sound legal premise to put some sort of duty on their fares until they quit deceiving. Adjusted Trade most of the exchanging collaborators can adjust their exchange spending plans and even run an excess. People have not endeavoured to adjust their exchange spending plan and have run a shortfall for over 30 years, bringing about an $11 trillion deficiency. The exchange shortage is the single greatest employment executioner in the economy, especially producing occupations. They require the legislature to build up an arrangement to start to adjust the exchange shortage, despite the fact that this is not a political need in either party. Exchange Agreements Both the NAFTA and the South Korean Chorus Exchange Understandings may have been useful for Wall Street and the multinational companies, yet they wiped out jobs in America and extended the exchange deficiency. The up-and-coming Trans-Pacific Trade Agreement will do likewise and Congress must not quickly track this awful assertion for 12 reasons. Authorising the Standards China disregards exchange principles and WTO laws with total surrender. Other than coin control, they finance their state-claimed organisations to focus on the business sectors and give subsidising to their state-possessed organisation that dump their items in America. They additionally take the advances, offer fake adaptions of the items and force taxis and different obstructions at whatever time they need, as people don't do anything to stop them. China should not be on the most supported country rundown and have to assess their fares to them until they stop these unlawful exercises. What is useful for undeveloped nations, similar to Kenya or nations with enormous development, similar to China, has not been useful for American labourers. Globalisation is deindustrializing America as they keep on outscoring both assembling manual and clerical employments. Supporters of globalization have put forth the defense that it is great since it has brought low valued imported merchandise, yet they have not coordinated the decay of wages in the white collar class and won't counterbalance the loss of numerous family wage employments. Globalization is similar to being overpowered by a snow torrential slide. You can't stop it, you can just swim in the snow and would like to remain focused. One might want to make the contention that the US ought to invest significantly more energy to swim in the snow and keep focused. You can't stop globalization, yet there are numerous arrangements and techniques you can use to make it more even-handed. You can authorize the exchange laws, constrain the opposition to play by the same guideliness, and quit giving the rivals the apparatuses, innovation and R&D to at last win the World Wide War. Impact of Globalization in Developing Countries This chapter will talk about the advantages and disadvantages from the perspective that globalization made in the developing nations in the three imperative fields. For example, economic and trade processes field, education and health systems, and cultural effects. It includes four passages. In passage one, the advantages and disservice of globalization in the economic and trades processes fields will be examined. At that point, 
in passage 2, the effect of globalization on education and health systems in both sides will appear. In the passage 3, the positives and negatives of globalization on society will be shown. The fourth one gives an overall conclusion. Globalization is a procedure of worldwide economic, political and social joining. It has made the world turned into a little town. The outskirts have been separated from nations. The historical backdrop globalization about faces to the second 50% of the 20th century, the advancement of transport and corresponding innovation, prompted circumstance where national fringes had all the earmarks of being excessively constraining for financial movement. Globalization is assuming an inevitably vital part in the creating nations. It can be seen that globalization has certain favorable circumstances, for example, economic procedures, mechanical advancements, political impacts, well-being frameworks, social and indigenous habitat elements. It has a great deal of advantages on a person's day-to-day -day life. Globalization has made other doors open for creating nations. For example, Innovation exchange holds out guarantee more prominent chances to get to created nations' markets, development and enhanced efficiency and expectations for everyday comforts. Be that as it may, it is not genuine that all impacts of this marvel are sure. Since globalization has likewise raised new difficulties, for example, ecological decays, unsteadiness in business and budgetary markets expand in balance crosswise over and inside of countries. This chapter assesses the positive and negative effect of globalization on creating countries in the accompanying extents. First, economic and trade processes. Second, education and health systems, third, culture effects. Economic and trade processes. Globalization offers developing nations to manage the financial development taking place in the rest of the world. Previously, developing nations were not ready to tap into the world economy because of exchange boundaries. They can't have the same monetary development that created nations had. Be that as it may, with globalization, the World Bank and international management urge developing nations to experience market changes and radical changes through expansive credits. Numerous developing countries started to find a way to open their business sectors by uprooting duties and free up their economies. The created nations could put resources into the developing countries, making openings for work for the poor individuals. For instance, fast development in India and China has brought on world neediness to diminish. It is clear to see that globalization has made the connections between created nations and developing countries more grounded. It made every nation rely on upon another nation. As per Thurl Wall, developing nations rely upon created nations for asset streams and innovation Yet, created nations depend intensely on developing nations for crude materials, sustenance and oil, and as business sectors for mechanical merchandise. One the most critical yet favourable circumstances of globalization are that merchandise and individuals are transported not very easily, but speedily too, which therefore results in expansion of unhindered commerce between nations and it also diminished the likelihood of war between nations. Besides, the development in the correspondence between the people and organization on the planet raised facilitated commerce.